The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, I'd like to welcome everybody from the Georgia Manufacturing Extension Partnership. This is Don Patel, Growth Services Manager. Um, welcome. We're going to start in about three minutes. Um, hopefully, you should be able to see the um, intro screen, and um, we'll get started in about two minutes. Thanks. Uh, Don, this window is still showing on mine. Should I click start broadcast? Sure. We'll see what happens. There you go. It disappeared. I'll move the cursor over and we're in good shape. Is Are you seeing what you need to see? Yes. Let me advance a slide. Uh-oh. It's not advancing. Okay. That's working. Okay, we're in good shape. All right. Okay, we'll start in about a minute and a half. Muted. Unmuted. It's making me nervous here, um, whether I can advance the slides or not. So hopefully everything's muted. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, um, if you're just joining us, I'd like to welcome everybody to our first of four webinars on unmuted machine shop and how we can improve our um, Today's topic is organizing the shop floor to increase the productivity of your most valuable assets, you and your employees. And um, we look forward to this presentation. Again, I'm Don Patel, Growth Services Manager with the George MEP. And um, we've got people actually from all over the country. Um, so we welcome you guys to sunny Georgia. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. Next. Uh, it is, uh, there we go. The MEP National Network is a unique public-private partnership that delivers comprehensive proven solutions to U.S. manufacturers, fueling growth and advancing U.S. manufacturing. So we focus on helping small and medium-sized manufacturers generate business results to thrive in today's technology-driven economy. Um, and the MEP National Network comprises the National Institute of Standards and Technologies Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program, hence the initials MEP. And there are 51 centers located in 50 states in Puerto Rico that comprise over 1,300 trusted advisors and experts at more than 400 service locations. So we can provide any U.S. manufacturer with access to resources they need to succeed. Next. 
Last year, the 51 MEP centers worked with approximately 28,000 manufacturers across the nation that created and retained 122,000 jobs and created 16 billion in sales, saving at 1.7 billion in operating expenses and increasing investments of 4 million back into their plants for future growth. So um, quite a bit of um, impact from the program. Next. Kind of drilling down into the Georgia program, the Georgia MEP is the Georgia arm of this national network, and it's actually based out of a university, Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, um, and we use a solutions-based approach to help Georgia manufacturers grow their business by doing two things, really increasing the top-line growth and the bottom-line cost. And as you can see from the map there, we have 10 offices across the state, and our strategic members are strategically located um, that we can reach any Georgia manufacturer within about two hours. And um, that's pretty cool considering Georgia is the biggest state east of the Mississippi. So go ahead, next slide, David. Like many of our MEP centers across the country, we help manufacturers in process improvement efforts, technology integration, um, ISO management systems, product quality, energy savings and sustainability, and also in identifying and growing and developing new businesses. Next. Last year, George MEP was, was awarded a grant, and um, that's kind of where we're going today, basically, in the first of four seminars. Um, the grant was basically awarded to address 100 machine shops through, a, through an assessment process, a no-charge assessment process, to help um, machine shops specifically improve and develop growth strategies to help their operations. And as part of these assessments, we, we've really uncovered four key areas among machine shops, and hence the topics, the four topics in the series that we're going to be presenting the first one on today. So we're going to be doing these June, June through September, one a month, and um, we feel like it's really going to address the needs for machine shop and machine fabricators. So today's webinar, Organizing Your Shop Floor to Increase Productivity of Your Most Valuable Assets, will be presented by David Apple. David is one of our project managers with the Georgia MEP, and he's been at Georgia Tech, or Georgia MEP, for over 17 years and previously spent 20 years in manufacturing at various companies. And David has a bachelor's degree from Georgia Tech and a master's degree, MBA from Georgia State. And as you're gonna learn in David's presentation, one of his key emphasis is David loves helping clients see what they can be. And um, that'll make a lot of sense as he gets into his presentation um, because being able to see things in your shop is um, a key um, topic he's going to be talking about today as we talk about um, organization. So with that, David, I'll turn it over to you. Um, just one other note, we're going to have everybody muted, but we'll be monitoring the chat questions. So if you have questions as we go, um, please feel free to type them in, and, and at the end, we'll moderate any of the questions we have. So without further ado, David, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Don. Welcome. I'm David Apple. I am located in beautiful northwest Georgia, and the sun is shining today. So thank you for joining us. This will be a, a quick a quick paced webinar with uh, lots of examples and, and photos. And as Don mentioned, we'll have some uh, time, at, leave some time at the end for questions. So as Don mentioned, we've been working uh, for two years on assessing the needs of small machine shops across Georgia. It's a group of manufacturers that uh, we have not spent very much time with, and we're assessing, determine, do they have the same needs as uh, larger manufacturers? And if so, how could we help them? And uh, is there something new that we need to learn or a need that they have that we may need to develop a special ex expertise to help them? So I've been very impressed with the machine shops that I've visited. 
Um, you guys uh, all work very hard and long, and I know that you live and die uh, by both customer service and quality. Did you guys ever feel like making parts is the easy part of your business and the hard part is actually running the business? Well, I've designed this webinar to give you information and guidance on how you can improve uh, one aspect of running your business. This session is called Organizing Your Shop Floor, but more than just organization, this will increase the productivity of your most valuable assets. That's you and your employees, the owners and the managers and the supervisors and uh, your most skilled employees. The heading on the slide says, uh, 5S Workplace Organization for Productivity and Profit. That might be the next slide. Um, now I lost my place. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an improvement method uh, called 5S. It'll help you improve productivity and safety at your company. And this is done by identifying and then solving everyday problems. We call it workplace organization, but that term doesn't really capture the magnitude of the issue. Let's take a look. Have you ever had a situation in your company or plant where you've had to call out the bloodhounds and have to have an all out search for something that's missing or lost? Do you find yourself having to walk to get something because it's not close at hand? Have you ever had to move something uh, because it's in the way of getting what you really want? Have you had to wait, ever had to wait for someone or something like materials or information or parts? Or have you had to stop what you're doing because you just discovered that something you need right now is missing? The next time you find you or one of your employees doing one of these things, ask yourself, why am I doing this? You know, what can I change so that I don't have to waste my time again? Today's topic is about recognizing where and how we waste time and effort and how big an impact this has on your business and then something you can do about it. Today's economy is very strong and all machine shops that we spoke with face a big problem and it's no surprise to you. No one seems to be able to find uh, additional skilled employees. Um, most of you identified on the survey questions uh, when you registered, I don't think there, I think everybody uh, indicated that you all are having difficulty finding skilled employees. Um, so another finding from our assessments, and it's related to the first is, the constraint on your business is typically people. Certainly there's some of you that have one machine that's sold out, at least it might be sold out on day shift, but typically lack of equipment isn't your major business constraint. Your business constraint is that you don't have enough skilled people to do the work. And 95, 94% of you answered the question that way, that it's your, your constraint is people. There were several that uh, answered the question that equipment is your constraint. So how is today's topic, workplace organization and skilled labor shortage related? If we can't find people, how can we meet our customer demand our current customer demand or grow our business. We've all heard the phrase work smarter and not harder. So how can we work smarter and make the best use of our most valuable resources? And that's our people. So it's not a matter of asking you to work harder or longer. And from what I've seen, you already work long and hard. Um, we see the opportunity to make significant improvements by learning to identify and then taking action to eliminate the time moisters that I mentioned at the opening. Does this workplace look organized? Questions are the hallmark of disorganization. Where is it? Where does it go? What is it? Which one? How many? And what you don't know could absolutely hurt you. 
if you don't see the issue here, this spray bottle, this is a close up of that spray bottle that's hidden in the first hidden in the first picture. The spray bottle is labeled xylene with a drink up written down in the in the remarks. This and the liquid is red, and I know xylene's colorless. So who really knows what's in this bottle? So disorganization is a challenge to hazard identification as well as a productivity killer. So what would you say that you do here? To do your job, job effectively, is this what you want your workspace to look like? When we talk about uh, normal, we mean this is how I want things and this is how it should be. Abnormal means something's not right and this is not how it should look. With 5S, we determine how we want things to be and how to keep it that way. Now I'm making the assumption that most of you have heard of 5S. Some of you are working on it in your shops. 5S is a five-step process and the five steps are words that start with S and they are uh, sort as in sort things out by getting rid of the excess. Uh, the second S is set in order, uh, put things in order by find, finding the best locations for things. Shine or shine it up is the third S and that's cleaning up everything uh, your machines, your tools, your workplace with the uh, intention of inspecting to find things that are that are wrong or need attention. The fourth S is standardize into your new method. And then the fifth S is how do you sustain it or sustain it by making the new method part of your part of your routine. So I'm going to cover each of the uh, S's, and I'm going to give some examples. Uh, there's other S words, sweep, straighten, sanitize. Some organizations even add safety as a sixth S, but these are the ones that are commonly, commonly used. So one of the keys of 5S is that 5S is a plan, and it's a process that you can follow. You can just go right down through the list. Now, 5S is not new. Uh, the principles are universal and reflect sound business practice. They're not just some recent management fad. Uh, Toyota says in the early days of uh, developing their, their famous Toyota production system that they were greatly influenced by Henry Ford's writings and practices. And as you can see, uh, 5S is very similar to Henry Ford's Can Do which was developed in the 20s. If you go to your local elementary school classroom, you'll find great examples of 5S. Without good organization, an elementary school classroom is gonna be chaos. By being this organized, what problems is the teacher solving? Uh, saving time searching for things, keeping from losing things, reducing clutter, by putting things back in their place after they're used and before getting out the new supplies for the next activity, uh, quickly and easily recognizing when something is missing or out of place. That's, a, that's important in the classroom as well as in your plant. And not only is the teacher helping herself and her students, uh, she's teaching the students the discipline of organization. And even the Berenstein Bears use it. You'll notice disorganized on the left, disorganization results in frustration and fighting, but organization results in peace and harmony. I imagine you all could use a little peace and harmony at your shop. So before you start doing this, you should ask a few questions. First, what problem are we solving? For 5S, to be successful, uh, everyone in the in the company or organization uh, needs to buy in and understand uh, that the the changes that you'll 
put in place with 5S are actually improvements in solving problems. And we're going to list and look at a number of the problems that it's going to solve. But it's not just about housekeeping. We're improving methods to save time and money and to work safer. safer. Then you ask, well, what do we want our workplace to look like? Create a mental picture or a goal of what you'd like your shop to look like. Um, or better yet, go visit a world-class shop to get some ideas. And it doesn't have to be a machine shop or a manufacturer. It could be an auto repair shop. It could be a grocery store. Or you could even go to your local Chick-fil-A and see how they uh, keep things organized. So let's look at a fabrication workplace that I assisted in a, a manufacturing company a few years ago. Now, what do you see? This is a very difficult place to work for these two employees uh, that are shown. Each of these bins and pallets and buckets have parts in them needed to fabricate an assembly. These operators have to walk on, walk around, step over, search for parts. They've got to bend, they got to reach, they got to carry parts. It's dark, it's cluttered. What else do you see? All these activities are what we call non-value added or waste. Our customer doesn't pay us to do this. Uh, so here's another look uh, at the same workplace from a different angle. You can see hydraulic lines, airlines on the floor. There's clutter that's accumulated under the tables. I don't know if those are extra parts or scrap or leftover tools. So we're going to follow this example through the five S's as well as seeing a number of other uh, photographs and examples. So how do we start? Here's the one of the things that we do is we uh, create what we call a spaghetti diagram. This is a sketch of the workplace layout and here you can see the walking paths of the, that the operators in the previous photo have to take to get their parts to get to their assembly uh, stations or their fab stations. As you can see, that's a lot of walking and a lot of wasted time and effort. You can create one of these and it's a very easy thing to do. You sketch out a workplace and you trace the operator movement while they're performing their work. It's a great way to visualize problems, areas in a work area. It's also a good tool for finding the waste when you're doing machine setups. So here's an example from a different company. And it's a very simple sketch, but it's a powerful way to visualize and communicate the need for some reorganization. In, uh, in one day, we worked with this company and several employees and did some simpler arrangement and reorganization and we cut the operation time by 25 percent we the operators cut the time their time by 25 percent and by the way the operator himself was the one who had most of the excellent suggestions both to reduce the distance walked and the number of trips so you can see it's not much as far as artwork but it's a strong visual uh, to indicate or help someone realize this is how much walking and waste I've got in the job that I do every day. When we're observing an, observ uh, an operation, we try to teach people how to identify waste. And you don't watch, uh, you don't see waste by watching the machines run. You see waste when you look at all the busyness around the shop that's not making parts. There was a, toy, a Toyota consultant named Taichi Ono, and he's famous for drawing a chalk circle on the work floor and making new engineers stand in the circle for a day just to observe and document all the non-value added waste that he sees. And here's what he asks him to look for. And we use the acronym or the acrostic Tim Woody as one way to remind us, uh, help us to remember uh, what the eight categories or waste are. So T is for transportation of parts or people or paperwork or maybe even information. Inventory is material that's in excess of what's needed now. 
M is for motion of uh, people within the workplace or uh, perhaps the way you've got your machine program and you've got excess travel time in them. Uh, the W is for waiting and you could be waiting on parts or people or your machine is down or you're waiting for someone to make a decision or for your paperwork. O is for overproducing and that's making more parts or doing more than the customer needs or wants. Uh, and of course, over, overproducing is one of the big reasons for excess inventory. Overprocessing is uh, doing work or going beyond what the customer specifies. <clears throat> and then D is probably the, one of the more obvious ones, and that's defects, um, rework or scrap where you've put some value added into a part, but it didn't turn into a good part that meets specifications and you have to um, rework it. And then the last one is uh, the why is for your employees are not engaged in improvement. And this one is perhaps uh, the most important waste. And the waste that we create by not training and engaging our employees to use our use their brains and their creative creativity to, to improve and i'll show you why now this is a diagram that we've taken from toyota's business model called the toyota way and it has two sections or two pillars uh, continuous improvement and it's complemented by respect for people Toyota understands that it's their people that really sets them apart from their competition. Every company has access to the same uh, machines and materials, and that's particularly true in, uh, with machine shops. But by developing their people, Toyota understands that they can get their ongoing improvement that keeps them ahead of their competition. Do you think the two employees that were in that workplace we looked at earlier had some ideas of how to improve the workplace? You bet they do. But what kept them from improving? Perhaps it was a lack of guidance. Maybe they didn't have permission or they didn't have support. Maybe this is just the way when they were introduced to the company, they were taught to do it. So here is how companies make breakthroughs and improvement by training everyone to see waste every day and taking a lot of small steps to improve. So we sometimes use this Tim Whitty acrostic as a means of saying, where do you, where do you find or where do you see Tim Whitty, Tim, Tim Whitty in your workspace or in your plant? So let's go through the five S's and see how you can do it at your company and how it'll help eliminate, uh, eliminate waste. So the first S is sort. That's sort out and remove things that aren't needed for the task at hand. These are things that are uh, excessive quantities, things in the wrong place, items that are just left over, obsolete, things out of date, broken, uh, look through drawers in cabinets on work surfaces what's been left by someone else um, who's been in the area or what's just accumulated uh, because you didn't know what to do with it and the idea is sort out and keep only the things that are needed at the task at hand of course you don't want to just throw things away so uh, we use what we call a red tag, a red tag process during the first S, which is sort. We use these tags as a way to identify the items that you move. And uh, so you'll know what they are. In this case, you say it's got who wrote the tag, what was the date, where did you find it, and why did you tag it? For instance, I found it in my work area, you know, my CNC lathe and the reason for red tagging it is i don't know what it is or it's left over from a previous job uh, or it's in the way and then you take these to a designated area 
uh, a red tag area. And what we do is we establish some rules, first of all, for what do we leave in the area, what do we remove, and then we set up some disposition rules. There's nothing worse than going in and starting your process for workplace organization and then discovering a week or two down the road that you've discarded something uh, that now you find out you need it. So uh, setting up a red tag holding area with some disposition rules is a way for someone else or to make judgments and evaluations uh, on what you're gonna discard or what you're gonna keep or where you're gonna store it in a different area. So remember that workplace that we saw before where there's those uh, two operators were doing that fabrication? Well, this team that I was working with, they went to the extreme. They moved everything out and they cleaned and they painted the area and they decided that this particular area just didn't measure up to the, what the rest of their plant looked like. And so they decided that they would create uh, first of all, they would improve this area, but then they decided we're going to establish a new benchmark in the company for what we think our workplace our workplace should look like. So remember, uh, change can be traumatic for for some people. Could be for all people, but have some empathy when you go in your work in a work area. Remember, this is uh, their home away from home. And some people will really take it personal. Explain the business case, get them involved, but resist the urge to just charge in and throw everything away. Remember, you're not the 5S police. So we're ready to move on to the second S. Now that we've removed the things that we don't need, uh, things that are in the way, clutter and trash, and then we set things in order. And that is put, setting things and putting things in the best location, not just organizing, but where should things be um, where you can easily get to it when it's needed and put it back. This applies to tools, tooling, materials, parts, instructions, schedules, supplies, and so on. The more frequently an item is used, the closer you should locate it to the point of use. And here's also where we look for safety improvements when we're doing our, uh, as well as our productivity improvements, such as uh, the image on the left. You can see there's two pallets. One is on the floor and the operator is having to bend down and lift something on the right side of that photograph. You can see there's a pallet that's up on a lift and it gets the heavy object that the operator is having to move uh, to the right working level. Of course, you can see on the right cords and hoses, that was uh, certainly a hazard in the example that we're working through. And then make sure your personal protective, protective equipment is uh, always available. Things like uh, uh, fire extinguishers, eyewashes, MSDS, and all those things. Now, going back to the example that we were following, here we are uh, looking at, we're testing out the locations where we think we want things. And just, this is, uh, when you're doing your set in order, I mean, this is kind of bare uh, right here, but when you're doing set in order, this is the time when you really want to test out locations and try them and see what works if you, you got an idea and it doesn't work out, test something else. Um, but you could also, um, so experimenting uh, is uh, what you do in the set in order stage. You can also look at your entire workflow and determine whether you've got to move some equipment around or just organize your workplace. And you can see how streamlined it is now with the incoming parts flow and then the workflow, and then through the cell. And it looks uh, much cleaner than that spaghetti mess that we had in that previous diagram. So 
uh, and this is nothing but basic old school industrial and in, industrial engineering methods improvement and it's not hard and you can train all your employees to be many industrial engineers as they learn to see waste and look at their methods. So the third S is shine. Cleaning is important uh, to keep your equipment operating at peak performance, uh, to keep your workplace uh, clutter free. And it's a simple daily task of cleaning is a great way to inspect your equipment to find their issues early before they turn into turn into break breakdowns. As you can see in these two examples, they don't look like they've been uh, cleaned in quite a while. Um, when you look at the after, you could say, oh, now when uh, I start to see some uh, contamination or some grease or oil leak, and now it's easier for me to find the source and spot it and then figure out a way to control the contamination at the source and also uh, you know look for any leaks or something that we may might need maintenance attention uh, by the way uh, getting back to, to the cleaning and the shine part I think uh, Probably about 98% of you who uh, answered the questions on the registration have clients that visit your plant. So uh, first impressions are important. And uh, it, not only does 5S improve housekeeping and make your place a better place to work, a safer place to work, make your equipment run better, but it's also uh, good marketing and uh, public relations. So let's go to the fourth S of standardizing. Now that you've uh, sorted out the things that you don't need, retained the things that you do, you've put those things in the locations, you've tested them, uh, you've cleaned up everything, your machines, your equipment. Now let's standardize it. Let's try to figure out how we can keep things this way. So this is how you make your improvements formal and permanent. And you can put some labels, marketing, marking, outlining, color coding, some instructions. And this is also a good way um, to take ideas from the area that you work into another area. As a matter of fact, most of the time when we're working with a uh, company doing 5S, uh, everybody's watching to see what's going on. You brought this outside person in. What are you all doing? And uh, very frequently, I see people in other areas beginning to start doing some cleaning up and organizing just because they've observed us working in an area. So don't forget about uh, your offices, your storeroom, your shipping and receiving. 5S is applicable there as well as in the shop. And so when we're talking about making things permanent, we're talking about it's permanent until we make our next improvement. No improvement uh, is permanent. We're always looking uh, how to do things better. So let's go back to our example. If you remember all the tubs and the pallets and the buckets and the bins we had, we replaced those um, with some part bins. And you'll notice that uh, parts are provided in the right quantity. They're oriented. They're not just thrown in a tub to have to be de detangled. The shelves are at the right height. Operators don't have to bend and uh, pick up things out of the, lift things, you know, out of tubs or off the floor. They don't have to walk around uh, tubs or over top of pallets. You'll see that there's part numbers and labels on the bin. So both the material handler who's supplying the parts and the operator uh, knows the right thing that's in there. And uh, you will notice that this does take a little bit uh, more work by the material handler uh, to organize these parts. But I think we uh, will agree that you'd prefer to have your material handler doing uh, this non-value added work than your, uh, you know, your high paid uh, skilled machinists. We're working to make this easy uh, for the operator the person doing the value-added work. 
And you remember earlier when I mentioned normal versus abnormal, this is how you establish normal. When something is not right or abnormal, it becomes readily apparent and easily corrected. So in our workplace that we're following our example, you can see they ran all the hoses and the cables and the wires overhead. Um, they've got some hose reels where applicable, but keeping the hoses off the floor uh, is probably the one instruction that I gave them more than anything. And so you can see they're off the floor and they're on the back side of the work uh, the workstations. So it looks like a better place to work. Uh, it's clean and neat, no clutter under the table. And then this is the work area from another, the same work area from another viewpoint. This is, and this area right in the foreground was what was cluttered with tubs and pallets and uh, buckets. So this team had a good, a good vision. They had great ideas. Uh, they worked hard to improve their workplace. And all I did was give them some guidance. Uh, all the ideas came from the employees and they are the ones that decided this is what we want it to look like. So this is how we work smarter and not harder. We make the work easier by removing, walking, lifting, bending. We make all the parts and tools and programs and information available so the operators don't have to wait or walk or search. You let your skilled people do more value added work that requires your skill and not the non value added Tim Woody waste. And remembering that the value added work is what your customers paying you to do. They're not paying you for your disorganization. Now, some wastes are easier to eliminate than others. For instance, a simple rearrangement of tools or materials or workbenches may be all that's needed to reduce excessive walking. And that could be either con considered either motion or transportation waste. Uh, however, if the waste that you're detecting is waiting, you're going to have to discern the source and the cause of the waiting. It could be simply a lack of planning or preparation, or it could be something more difficult, such as an upstream quality problem. On the more difficult issues, uh, you may have to uh, pull together a team and do some analysis to get to the root cause. So the keys to success are learning to see waste, uh, training and engaging your employees in improvement, celebrating and recognizing even little improvements, and passing knowledge on through simple informative idea cards. For example, this one here on the right side is an example of a one page before and after summary. It's a way to share ideas of what you've done in one area with the other plan. Oh, we still got one S left. The fifth S is sustain. How do we system sustain or some say systemize or uh, self-discipline? How do we engage employees on a, on a daily basis to maintain what we've accomplished through the first uh, four S's. How as leaders uh, can you be prepared to su uh, support this process? And then also, how do we measure success? Periodic audits help. This is an example uh, from one company that we've worked with. And this type of audit sheet uh, is a way you can score an area and you can acknowledge what's done well. You can identify what needs improvement and you can track process. It's also a teaching tool. Uh, an audit form such as this one tells you what your next step would be um, to go from level to level, say from one to five. We are going to provide um, an example, this example of a 5S audit sheet plus another one um, that we have, as well as making this presentation available uh, to you. So you can see these uh, in more detail. But like any, anything successful, this does uh, require ownership. 
it takes diligence and it takes discipline. So uh, this is the management aspect of 5S and this is how you maintain it. So let's run through a few more examples uh, quickly and with minimum uh, commentary by me. We have to remember that uh, 5S is not just about housekeeping or making things uh, look good. You can't just hide things in drawers or cabinets and uh, say you've improved your workplace. Um, keep asking yourself, do we need this? Why is it here? Look at how much dust is collected. It indicates maybe uh, we're not using things. Uh, when we sort it out, this is uh, an example of a red tag area where we put things to get them out of the way and then disposition them later. This is just an example of a tool board. And here, this is 5S supply board. So this is where you're keeping the things that you're going to use when you're doing uh, your set and order step. Boy, what would this place be uh, without uh, some type of order? I believe these are like flexographic printing plates, and they must be thousands of them. And without uh, good order, uh, these things would be, they could get easily lost. Uh, this is another project I worked on, and these are uh, uh, collecting tools that were on the floor and putting them, uh, putting them on a tool board where they're easy to see and organized, and you can tell what's missing. This is a... Uh, Another example where we just got uh, the team got rid of the cabinet because it was really doing nothing but accumulating junk and the important things that they needed out of that cabinet they put on a uh, they put on a board where they're easy to access and you know from the shadows you can actually tell uh, where to put things back and what's missing. If uh, you're going to ask your employees to keep their areas clean, you need to make sure that you've got cleaning tools available and that they're not cluttering up your workplace or getting lost or stolen. This is a good example of uh, making things visually obvious. And in this case, happens to be kind of an operator self-check on a maintenance issue. But here you can see um, a fluid level uh, you can see in a very clean machine, but you can also see a fluid level and it's very clearly marked and easily to read. Uh, so you can make a daily check to make sure that uh, uh, at a glance, whether you need to take some action or not. Here's a good uh, example of uh, standardizing for maintenance parts and instructions right on the rack. And I mentioned earlier, make things visually obvious. You know, what kind of airplane is this? Where does it go? So it's not hard. You can be creative. Uh, so 5S is not hard or expensive. Uh, you and your people are your company's greatest resources. You need to reduce the time you waste on your non-value added activity so you can create more time doing value-added work. And a small investment in training and pulling together a team to do this work can unleash uh, the power of your people. And once you start the snowball rolling of improvement, it can keep growing. Each little improvement yields some type of savings or uh, in a typical machine shop, increased capacity of your skilled, of your skilled people. How much opportunity is there to improve? Boy, in your registration processes, uh, about a third of you said you thought, you know, 10% of your time was wasted on these uh, Tim Woody wastes. 43% of you said it was like 15 to 25%. And then the rest of you said more than 25%. And you can make a dent in those numbers. Uh, and it's like finding an additional one or two skilled employees. The idea being, if you can't hire them, let's figure out what's wasting our time so we can uh, spend more time doing value-added work. 
and less time uh, walking around looking for things. Now, those of you who are company owners or leaders, there's a significant improvement opportunity for you too. What could you do with an extra half day or a whole day per week? So I want to make a pitch for our next webinar, Job Shop Quoting, how to streamline your process. Uh, that's going to be in the one in July. My colleague Bob Ray's doing that one. In most of the machine shops I visited, quoting is a very time-consuming process. And it's performed by you company owners or and or, you know, one of your other most highly skilled people. At each of the machine shop assessments we conducted, we talked through the quoting process. And there are significant opportunities for improvement, improvement in your quoting process. Some of the same concepts that we talked about organizing your shop floor, uh, we can use to identify and reduce waste uh, in the quoting process. So if you're involved in the quoting process, please sign up for uh, Bob's webinar. So how do I get started? We'll go out and simply in your shop and simply observe what's happening. You remember I mentioned uh, a Toyota consultant named Taichi Ono who drew the truck circle on the floor. Just go out in your shop and take time to observe and look for all the non-value added waste that's going on. Not, not the actual you know, producing of parts, but all the activity that goes on around it. Pick out one of the wastes you see, pick out, see one that really bugs you, and then pull together a couple people and start solving the problems. Uh, to learn more about using this uh, uh, chalk circle method, here's a, here's a link that you'll have when you get the presentation. But pick out a particular work center, Work with a couple of your employees and your machinists and use it to improve using these 5S principles. It's not hard uh, or expensive, and uh, everybody is always uh, excited about the results and pleased to improve their, their work environment. Now, here's a couple of resources. You know, you do a quick search of 5S on the Internet and you'll pull up thousands of resources. I tell you, nothing beats a little bit of experience tell. You know, those of you in Georgia, you know, call us uh, or contact us. And uh, if you're not from Georgia, you probably signed up for this because you're in contact. You uh, uh, know the local MEP, but we can put you in contact with the ones if you don't know your the MEP uh, manufacturing extension partner in your state. But this uh, 5S for Operators is a small uh, book. It, it walks you through this process, and it is designed for, uh, for shop floor people uh, to teach 5S. Uh, you could go through that book with a, with a team of people. Uh, the second one down here is called Two Second Lean at Fast Cap Incorporated. Uh, it's a company up in the state of Washington that uh, they are just nuts about improvement. And they can, you can go on their website and look at a couple of their videos and you'll understand their excitement of how they get better uh, each day and how they engage all their employees in improvement. So I hope you found this uh, presentation informative, maybe challenging. Um, we've got, uh, we've got some time for questions. Um, Don, you want to talk to the upcoming webinars and then we can take the questions? Yeah, sure. As I'm going through this, if you want to um, utilize the chat or question feature and, and um, put in your questions, we'll cover them. Um, again, we thank you guys and hope you enjoyed today's webinar on 5S. And as David has mentioned, we've mentioned before, we're going to be sending out today's slides in a follow-up email along with the two 5S worksheets that David mentioned. Um, which are a really great way to get started and, and um, on this process. And um, we still got plenty of seats available in the other three webinars shown on your screen. Um, job quoting, as David mentions, coming up in July. And then um, machine shop sales and growth strategies um, was another um, 
large area of um, interest of how, how do I grow my business in my machine shop? And then the last one is a little bit more on the marketing side of the sales of, of how can I proactively market my machine shop? So um, when you get the um, presentation, you can go to those clickable links and register, and we'd love to have you there. Okay, David, if you wanna. Were there any questions, Don? Yeah. Did I uh, make everything go. perfectly clear? I am still waiting. I don't have any questions yet. We've got uh, about five minutes left if you want to um, ask a questions. Don, I will mention, uh, we did a dry run last week and one of our colleagues uh, from the marketing group listened in and she was able to pick up a few things that uh, we were able to clarify. So hopefully the second time around, uh, we made it much better. I'm just going to quickly unmute everybody, and if you have it, we'll just give it a, a shot, and if you have a question, I'll let you just verbally speak it. I will make one comment, Don, if, there's, if there are people still listening. Um, early in the presentation, I made the uh, comment about Henry Ford and his can-do process. And Henry Ford wrote a book in the 1920s called, I um, oh, know I can't think of it, but it was about his manufacturing philosophy. Um, three quarters of that book is excellent. And you can read that and understand um, where uh, Toyota picked up uh, many of these ideas um, that Henry Ford had and his team had developed as they were developing uh, the first automotive, uh, su really successful automotive company. Uh, I said the first three quarters of the book. At the end, he starts uh, um, uh, complaining about Wall Street and the stock market and gets into some of his political philosophies. But uh, the first part of that book is, is excellent, and you can understand um, where Toyota came up with uh, synchronized flow, just in time, organization, um, the can do, which turned into 5S, um, the focus on methods improvement and continually improving and working with your operators uh, every day on getting better. <clears throat> Today and tomorrow is the name of that book. Everybody has the ability to unmute themselves. I'll just give it another 30 seconds or so if anybody wants to unmute and ask a question. If not, I don't see any questions on the, the list, so um, we'll just give it another 30 seconds and then we'll close it out. Again, you should be getting the, um, the presentation and, and the other material, the worksheets, um, in the next day or two. And... Um, with that, we will close it out. So again, thank you all for attending our first of four webinars um, geared towards machine shops. And um, we look forward to catching up with you on another webinar. So thank you and, and have a great Tuesday. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. And we'll take action. <laughs>